Hi guys, so we have a Mutants and Masterminds game for you today. This has a railroading DM that has the cringiest OC since Sonic 2, in my opinion. Yeah, it's really fucking bad. Yeah. It's mega gay. It's so bad. So, as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you at the end of the video. Buckle in, gents. I have a story about slowly turning into that guy as the game spiralled out of control. It was a hero versus villains, mutants, and masterminds game. The DM was inspired to run it after reading a green text story. So to green text, it shall return. Premise is simple enough. Villains have a session one day to set up plots for the heroes to thwart the next day. Playing a villain, classic billionaire mob boss with more power than he's letting on and deep enough pockets to not have to give away secrets easily. Other villains include the tech genius, a young woman with a maniacal streak and empathy issues and the plague doctor the physical embodiment of Teenage Edge, wants to infect the entire world with his plague as an offering to the horsewoman, pestilence and bone her. PD's motivation was canon in the universe, but nothing about pestilence was ever confirmed. Villains start strong, we organise a bank heist to test the reaction time of the heroes. Only one hero shows up to the heist, the others are caught in traffic or have their pants down. Tech Genius rigged up a device that teleports the vault in its entirety to a secure facility I provided. My team of experts disassemble the vault and load the money into my laundering operations. PD had the audacity to accuse me of not pulling my weight, despite his own contribution to the heist being equivalent to zero. This sets the tone for my interactions with PD both in and out of character for the entire campaign. If you're out there, Contagion, you're a cunt and I was planning on killing your character. Sessions start to go by, hero players quit and get replaced so often that I stop trying to keep track of who the active heroes are at the time. Heroes make mistakes publicly that I can take advantage of in character. Launch a Meryl campaign with the goal of removing heroes from the city. Tech Genius has founded a startup tech company, funded by the mob boss through a number of shell companies and fake investor profiles. PD still lives in the shitty apartment I gave him when he first slipped into the city hasn't achieved much of anything besides increasing flakiness. Villains are effectively just my mob boss and the tech genius. We have a few drop-in allies, but the two of us are at the core of everything. DM decides that the villains have it too easy, missing the fact that the heroes are supposed to be thwarting us. We even gave them a few wins and easy trials to follow to prevent them from feeling like they weren't achieving anything. DM sets up a tech company for the villains to overthrow in service of the Tech Genius's startup company. Tech Genius steals all their databases. I buy the company and the rights to all the stolen blueprints while the chips are down. It's a resounding success. DM announces that there's a team of three scientists who were at the core of the destroyed company, all of which have intelligence equivalent to or higher than the smartest person we all know, the Tech Genius. We're encouraged to try and hire them, Tech Genius is unsure and leaves the decision to me. I plan to kill them to prevent information breaches. I miss a week because of some IRL shit. Come back and the three super genius scientists are now 16 mutated monsters <laughs> led by a single super duper genius. This change didn't happen in game. The DM just changed it on a whim. Super duper genius is a 70 year old man in the body of a 7 year old boy called Red. The art used to represent him was Red from the Pokemon series. His 16 super monsters, all immediately summonable and without limits on the number of summonable at one time. I guess you could say they were summonable? <laughs> <laughs> I can't fucking say that word either. Were equal to or higher than the PL of both heroes and villains. The real road had been constructed. Chee chee motherfuckers! <laughs> <laughs> Red enters the secret pocket dimension that serves as the secret base of the tech genius. Threats are exchanged until Red threatens to collapse the pocket dimension and displays the ability to do so. He demands a meeting with the mob boss. Tech genius comes to me and organises a meeting, mentions that her life and work are threatened. Agree to the meeting, but insists that it must be taken one on one in the very centre of my compound. A reinforced bunker that once sealed is virtually impossible to get in or out of. Red meets me there, demands that I fund his research and in return he and his monsters will act as the guardians of the city. No thanks. I have a very good police force. Please leave. Also, threaten my employees again and I will personally remove you from this mortal coil. He summons one of his monsters, gives a cocky grin. What about now? Sigh. 
pull a gun and shoot the seven-year-old in the face. <laughs> <laughs> but the DM player character would not be thwarted so easily, and the train was already chugging along. He summons another monster, which heals him immediately upon being summoned. Mate, he got shot in the, got shot in the fucking face. face. Alright, whatever, sure. Let's, <laughs> let's, just, let's just go with it. Whatever, I'm probably done with this game. Let's fucking rumble. Climb the desk, and for the first time in the game, activate my superpower. I declare to the DM that I hit him with a bone breaker. Critically hit the seven year old boy, extending the bones of my forearm straight through his head. Fuck. The seal on my bunker room is broken. The tech genius starts teleporting the summoned monsters away. Tech genius sends a perfect robotic replica of herself into the bunker to effectively self-destruct and confirm the death of Red. As Red dies, all 16 of his Pokeballs spill out onto the floor, summoning all of his monsters. Choo choo motherfucker, you best be getting back on the train. Plague Doctor is off somewhere jacking off because he's about as effective as being a villain as a puppy with Down Syndrome. <laughs> Oh. Tech Genius, in a move unbecoming of her villainous origins, uses everything she's got to teleport my mob boss to the safety of her rooftop some miles away and open a portal to her pocket dimension, taking all of the summoned monsters with her. I light a cigarette and watch the sunset. It would have been a great moment had the DM not decided that two of the monsters teleported back from the pocket dimension to come fuck with the rest of my day. Meanwhile, Tech Genius collapses her pocket dimension killing all the imprisoned monsters and herself in the process. Pixel, we didn't deserve you. It would have been an incredible moment, if not immediately marred by roll toughness. Fight the two escape monsters, kill one. A Nerdragant from Monster Hunter and the other anime dragon thing flies off in retreat. I think the Plague Doctor might have had a token fight with something in there so the player would stop whining about feeling useless, but it was ultimately unimportant. As the closer to the session, the DM gave us a description of his precious OC reforming and straightening his lab coat. I spoke with the tech genius player between sessions, who expressed the same disappointment that the elevation we felt after defeating the railroad was taken away by the realisation that the DM was just going to do it again. I'm seriously considering quitting at this point, but figured the game had spiralled so far out of control that a natural death is coming soon enough. Might as well see it through. I'm the only villain in the week's villain session. Plague Doctor flaked as usual and Tech Genius had some IRL stuff to address. At the start of the session, I'm in a meeting with Red. I don't indulge the DM's digging for, I thought we killed you, and how are you alive? He tells me that he's immortal anyway. Oh, oh fuck God. off. Bullshit. Jesus Christ. He got a fist through the face, I'm telling you. He got shot in the face, a fist through the face, and fucked <laughs> into a pocket dimension. <laughs> but no! <laughs> Fucking autistic screeching meme in the background. Yeah. <laughs> I think the DM legitimately may have forgotten my own character's technical immortality. But more on that later. Insist that Red go elsewhere. We've killed him once and he maybe has one monster left. And I hear Guam is lovely this time of year. He has new demands that don't involve siphoning my money. I refuse to hear them and insist that he leaves. He again insists that I allow him and his monsters to be allowed to be the guardians of the city. I'm frustrated both in and out of character. I tell the kid that I've just been elected mayor. I've already privatised and militarised the police force. I have an army to protect the city and the money to declare secession from the United States should I need to. He cockily reveals that he's wearing a wire and tries to bribe me into agreeing to his demands. I refuse. Tell the people what you want. They love me. And if they have to, they will learn to fear me. He finally leaves. At this point, the DM tries a different approach. One of my complications was that I wasn't the dawn of the fake mafia. I was highly ranked, but there was still another guy above me. My intention was to give the DM the opportunity to give me outside pressure from elsewhere in the mob. Instead, Red visits me again and tells me, guess what? I'm the head of your mafia family now. You have to listen to me. No thanks, kid. I'm independent now. Get out of my office. <laughs> he shows me a video of the previous head of the family, bowing down and begging him for more before Red injects him with a syringe that turned him into a monster. He tells me that if I refuse, everyone I love will die. I'm a villain, mate. It's just business. DM starts sending me the heads of the lieutenants I wrote up so the heroes would have trails to find evidence of my corruption and criminal nature. Expects me to give a little soliloquy as each new head is delivered. Out of character, I've given up. 
The game is dead and I'm just looking for an exit. The last of my lieutenants shows up. The one I had marked as my character's favourite. She's been injected with the monster mutation virus and has been sent to capture me. DM tries his hand at an emotional moment here by having the lieutenant beg me for help. I insist that I will help you my dear and fire a full clip from my pistol in here. DM don't care. I'm getting kidnapped and there's nothing I can do about it. Lean back in my chair and mourn the loss of such a promising game. Character wakes up in a vat of green ooze. Gets flushed out by a team of scientists and excitedly told, congratulations, the process was a complete success. And one of the biggest examples of a misread room since the Diablo Immortal announcement. <laughs> <laughs> Is this like an out of season? <laughs> yeah. Out of season joke. The what, you guys don't have phones? <laughs> The DM asked me, what monstrous mutations would you like? You have 10 PP, 10 PP. <laughs> Very big PP. Very big PP to send. <laughs> Spend, sorry. Oh, fuck it, we'll just use that, we'll use I don't want any monstrous mutations. I'm a political figure hiding his superpowers. DM seems downcast, but says that it's okay. I'm naked in a lab after being injected with the monster mutation virus. I asked the DM how long my character's been out. 10 days. Is there any nicotine in my system? This part is important. My character was par gamey as fuck. He could regenerate from huge amounts of damage, manipulate his bones into weapons, and couldn't die. But only so long as there was nicotine in the system. <laughs> Same. <laughs> <laughs> Did they at least have the courtesy to leave my gear here? I'm told that my equipment is in the next room. As I head there, the DM announces that a 10 year old girl runs into the room excitedly and calling me daddy. Oh god. Oh, that's not a good start for no. anything. Motherfucker Loganed me with a clone baby. I'm out, bitch. I go to my gear, retrieve my gun, and shit myself in the head. <laughs> <laughs> the DM seems surprised. But there isn't any nicotine in your system. You're vulnerable. I know. The DM explains the scene. My mob boss ignoring his apparent child and tries to paint a sympathetic picture of the kid being horrified as I blow my brains out in front of her. So, I guess your character's dead? Yep. Do you want a new character sheet? <laughs> no thanks, I'm done. I told the other players that I was stepping out and the DM shit canned the game almost immediately after. See, the problem I've got with this one is I feel to believe that that DM was that fucking clueless. I know, I know. You know, he seemed so unaware does that make any sense? Yeah, like the game was shit. <laughs> yeah, he, d- he didn't seem to like, like, it's like, no, you know, the heroes, they have to win, don't they? So like, you know, we'll, 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 try, and, we'll try and jumpstart that, will yeah. we? And then even he just feels fucking miserably at it. And then he doesn't seem to catch on. That, <laughs> that it's shit. <laughs> that, that it's shit, he just keeps fucking And that doing nobody's it. enjoying it. Yeah, it's like, right, no, th- this is like that SpongeBob being... No, but that- this is the storyline. <laughs> this is how it's, it's meant like, to go. All right, I'm out. <laughs> you know, that, I, I'm out. <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> yeah. like, that's really what it boils down to, you know. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, all that other good shit. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye. All done. Moments will be lost in time.